We're going to turn the microphone over to Brother Smallwood Muhammad that he may state his stance on this issue and the existence of God, whether God is created or whether God has always existed. And after he make his statement known to you that are here and you that are listening and watching, him and I will get a chance to get into dialogue one with the other, with the scriptures as our foundation. Brothers and sisters, Brother Smallwood Muhammad. Thank you. Peace be unto you. I just want to start off by um, addressing a little statement that I had, um, you know, written up the other night. So if you can, please be patient with me. This is my first time ever behind a mic, <laughs> behind an altar. In the name, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, we thank Allah for his coming and the person, the master, Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. We thank Allah for his prophets, his servants, and the scriptures that they brought. And we thank Allah for Moses and the Torah and for Jesus and the gospel and for Muhammad, the Holy Quran. Peace be upon all of these worthy servants of Allah. If I live to be a thousand, I don't think that I could ever thank Allah enough for his divine intervention in our affairs as a people, as a black people, for his raising up one from among us in this critical hour, in this day and time, to lead us, to teach us, and to guide us to the path of Islam, I speak of none other than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the last and greatest messenger of Almighty God, Allah. About a month ago, Brother Jennings challenged me to prove in the Bible that God created himself from darkness. Now the answer to that question is a very simple answer because he said that I must prove in the Bible and the proof is nowhere in the scriptures to be found where God ever said that he had created himself from darkness. So I just can't simply prove something that's just simply not there. It would be just like asking, it would be like me asking you to prove to me in the scriptures that Jesus <laughs> ate pork. I know you go in that scripture, you will search from the beginning of Genesis to, to the end of Revelation and you won't find it because he just simply didn't do it. The subject of the origin of God, that's a very difficult subject to explain. Very difficult. So I had chose really not to really discuss that subject for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad off times did not care to go into that subject either. But we can go into other subjects, but if Brother Jennings want to go there, I'll try my best, and I'm going to put my best for, my foot forward this afternoon to do the best that I can. The best that I can. Okay? Now I can prove other things in the scripture as far as interracial marriages, Okay, according to the scripture, how God is against that. I can go into the scriptures and prove 
who the true Jehovah Witnesses are. With no you know, disrespect to brother, but like he said on other tapes, on other occasions, there's just some scriptures he's just going to have to come up to. <laughs> I mean, they're his words. <laughs> praise be to Allah. All praise be to Allah. <laughs> now, I want to say this, right? I'm not for mosque number 12. I never once on any of my letters stated that I was for mosque number 12. Nor am I affiliated with any mosque at this present time, brothers and sisters. I'm an insignificant little brother who loves the Honorable Elijah Mohammed. However, I do believe in God, just as you believe in God. I believe in God. And I'm not here today to try to, you know, take you off your course with that. That's not why I'm here. I'm here so that maybe we could bring some closure on some things that we disagree on. And maybe it can bring us even closer together. Because for a long time, brothers and sisters, all praise is due to Allah to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Christians and Muslims have failed to even try to walk together because of their religious differences, differences when it comes to the prophets. Okay, you believe in Jesus. Oh, that, that's fine. As Muslims, we also believe in Jesus. This book right here that I have, which is called the Holy Quran, Okay, it tells us that we are to believe in Jesus. We are to believe, in fact, in all of the prophets of Allah. The Quran says to us as Muslims, it says, وَلَا It says and that we are not to make a distinction between any of the prophets, whether it was from Adam to Muhammad, because all of these divine prophets that Allah has sent to us, okay, they never argued and bickered over who they thought was right as opposed to who they believed was wrong. It wasn't the case with that. The case today is that we just have to try to, you know, come together so that we can become brothers and sisters to one another. So I hope and pray brothers and sisters, by the end of this telecast today, that maybe we can walk, that we won't look at each other as being some foreign outcast that just because I'm a Muslim, you look at me different, or because you're a Christian, I have to treat you different. No, sir, I'm not going to do that. Mr. Farrakhan, a brother who I, I greatly admire, Brother Silas Muhammad, another brother who is working very diligently right here in this country in America. Is, you know what I'm saying? You know, brother, so we have to learn how to put our little petty differences aside. So we get into this thing where I'm Muslim, you Christian. It's almost like we're into gangs. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, you know, okay, I'm from this corner, and you're from over there, and I dare you to trade upon my territory. This is the house of God. I feel very comfortable. You know, being up here today. And I want to thank all praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. I, so I can feel the spirit already. <laughs> Listen, brother, I want to thank Pastor Gino for just even allowing me to stand up here and do something like this. Huh? Because there's no other Christian that I know of in this city or elsewhere that will allow this event to take place, this type of formal setting where you can come and ask them anything that you want on scripture. That's beautiful. Now, <laughs> Now that I said all that, <laughs> I want to try to 
you know, be as succinct as I possibly can. I want y'all to relax. I want y'all to enjoy yourselves as I try to relax and enjoy myself. And I hope today, after I'm finished, that me and this brother can walk out and we, and we can all become one family, because we are one family. God didn't create us like this man to be divided and split it up and argue and fighting like fools and children. Children got more sense than we do when it comes to this head, because they can get into fights and go right back to being friends tomorrow. You and I still be mad with each other. <laughs> So if, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to bring brother back up and let's see what type of dialogue that we can get into and hope that it can be a very peaceful, because I come in peace, brother. I represent peace. The very religion, the name of Islam itself, brother, it means peace and submission to the will of God. It is the religion of the prophets. The book of Thessalonians, the, book, the Bible in itself, when Paul speaks about the religion of peace, he was speaking about Islam. For Islam means exactly that. Jesus in Luke chapter 24, verse 36, when he stood in the midst of his disciples, <laughs> the first words that came out of his mouth was peace. Peace be unto you. In other words, assalamu alaikum. Okay? John chapter 20, verse 19 through 20, he uses that same expression again. You know, and most Christians, you're the first ones I ever hear use that term. Because most people use the expression, hello. And we know hell is low. <laughs> and if you say that you follow him, and you are supposed to be Christ's light, Come on, okay, then why is it that you don't greet one another? Or why is it that they, they don't greet one another with the expression of peace? That's right. They're using the devil's advocate, his terminology, keeping him in existence when we're trying to knock out his brains. That's why we're here today. So... I want to bring Brother Gino Jennings back up to the forum and let's see, Brother, what we can do. Thank you. Again, brothers and sisters, we greet all of you. My Muslim brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. We thank the Almighty God for blessing us to be present. <clears throat> that you that are here and you that are listening and watching uh, may have a clear understanding of what we're talking about. Uh, we enjoy the remarks from Brother Smallwood Muhammad. Even though he said this cannot be proven, but it is something that the nation of Islam believes. And if God is going to be the foundation of our religion, every divine messenger that have ever been sent of God must represent God in spirit and in truth. Is that right? Amen. Every divine messenger. Whatever message the messenger has, Whenever you talk about God, you're not talking about someone from a local neighborhood. Amen. We're not talking about a politician or a renowned president. We're talking about master of all creation, teacher and sender of all holy prophets. And in God, there is no flaws, no errors. He is perfection within itself. Amen. Now, in the teaching of the nation, I also want to apologize to the brother from saying he was from mosque number 12. He's not, and forgive us for yes, misrepresenting. Yes, sir, you're forgiven, brother. Um, the teaching that God created himself from darkness, we want to simply know even though it's not in the scriptures, but it was taught. So the teaching is either correct or incorrect, and the believers that was on the receiving end of that teaching, plainly putting it, either believe truth or an existing lie told about God. This is what we're dealing with. Amen. Because God is perfect. Mm -hmm. 
And man is supposed to reflect God in that perfection. Amen. Amen. So either God was created, created himself by darkness, my brother, either that statement is true, or either it's a lie. We're not talking about me, we're not talking about you, we're not talking about no one here. We're talking about God. Right. And when we're supposed to be servants of God, that service must be rendered the way God desired for it to be rendered. Amen. So I say to you, is that statement true or is it a lie? Well, Brother Genos, to answer your question, the Quran tells me that we are to believe in Allah. Yes, sir. And to believe in his messenger. Yes. We are to obey them. So if the Quran is telling me, giving me a, a, an instruction, I'm going to carry that instruction out. And I know, Brother Gino, as well as you do, that even with all of the prophets, when they brought a message, the people didn't understand fully because look how complicated Jesus message was for a lot of people to understand mm -hmm. and even today they don't understand this is why you're here this is why i'm here to try to bring or we'll shed some light on that on that understanding but it's a lot of time when you called me the other night and we got into some dialogue about you know how you know the prophets must be in 100 agreement with each other or something like that and i was trying to illustrate to you how during the time of jesus when he was speaking on the subject of adultery and they had asked him, you know, um, when Jesus said that, um, you know, you have heard it said that thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And then he rendered his interpretation of that, taking the law of Moses in account. But yet his interpretation of that thing could not be verified at that particular moment in history because as I stated, there was no New Testament. There was no New Testament. It was only the Old Testament. So a lot of times, all the time with the prophets, they don't necessarily always have to be in agreement with each other. Well, brother, let me say this. We're not talking about adultery. <laughs> no, we're I was not, just using that yes, as an example. I agree. <laughs> but we're not talking about adultery or pork or chicken or chitlins. We're talking about God. Amen. And I'm telling you, God is, must be the foundation of religion. And if any messenger say a revelation came to me about God, Amen. then the messenger must get his message accordance to scripture. Yeah. Now the honorable Elijah Muhammad, which uh, I have never heard him teach this. I have studied the teaching of Elijah Muhammad through tapes, watching his the Savings Day messages from the 50s and 60s. Never heard I him say God created himself from darkness. But I hear that teaching moreover from Minister Louis Farrakhan. So that means if Minister Farrakhan and the brothers of Islam are true believers. True believers must believe in the Quran. And what Allah say about himself in that Quran. Right. Allah is represented by Muhammad in the Quran. Right. And either the teachings of Allah through Muhammad is correct or either the teachings of Allah through Muhammad is incorrect because what Muhammad says here and what Elijah Muhammad says later is different. One of these Muhammads is wrong. That's the basic. And for anything to get accomplished, we're going to have to have a hardcore, direct right. dialogue. That's right, That's right sir. Well, we don't agree. Amen. One of these Muhammads is wrong. Amen. If God is not the author of confusion, then man is the blame. Amen. Amen. Let us live.
listen at the Bible first, and then we'll read something out of the Quran. Amen. Is everybody all right? Amen. Listen at the scriptures. In Psalms 90. Let's see who created this darkness. In Isaiah chapter 45. And begin reading at verse 6. Yes. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. God talking. Amen. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord and there is none else. Yes. I form the light. I, God says, I form the light. And create darkness. And God says, and create darkness. I make peace. I make peace. And create evil. And create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, God has given testimony about himself. In the Quran, Surah chapter 1, and begin at verse 1, say, He is Allah, the one and only. Verse 2, Allah, the eternal, absolute. Verse 3, 3, He beginneth not, nor is he begotten? Verse 4, there is none like unto him. Amen. Now, this is a contradiction of the teachings of Minister Farrakhan. Because when you say eternal, what is eternal? Well, I would like for you to be able to address that one because you really can't put a time on it because we know that from everything that came into existence had to have some sort of beginning. Well, but I, when does it begin? We don't know. Can a thing be eternal and have a beginning? Well, it depends on your understanding of it because I know it talks about from everlasting to everlasting, but what exactly does that mean? Like I said, so we're not really, I'm not really that versed because I'm not in the, in the nation on that subject. Well, everlasting and eternal is the same thing. Yeah. But the teachings of Islam, the nation of Islam, that God created himself from darkness is a violation of the Quran. Because that's saying God did not always exist. Right. And if that is so, how can Allah bear the title Almighty and need help from an element to become God? Yeah. That will be blaspheme against the religion of Islam. Yeah. That'll be blaspheme. So, if God created himself from darkness, would that not contradict what God just said he made darkness? Well, can I ask you a question then on that subject? Yes. Matter? Well, then what was there before there was darkness? If God created darkness, then what state was he in before he created the darkness? He was just God. <laughs> just God. to be? What state do God have to be in? Amen. Remember, God is God. <laughs> the title Almighty Allah mm -hmm. will not be sufficient for him to wear if he needs help right. to come into being. God doesn't need no help. Right. God is the self-existing one. Always was. No beginning, no ending. We need to help, not him. So again, I'm asking, is that teaching that God created himself from darkness 
is that not direct contradiction to what the scriptures just said and what the Quran just said Allah the eternal the absolute <coughs> absolute now go ahead bro now according to the Bible in the third chapter of Habakkuk Yes. It speaks about how God came from t -Man. Yes. You know, Brother Dawood is a little bit better on the subject than I am. Yeah. But like I said, I'm not really familiar or, you know, If another well brother would like to come up and aid you, he can. Yeah. I invite any brother. brother from the nation of Islam who desire to come up here and talk about the greatest of the greatest. Amen. Amen. one thing clear. We're not here trying to belittle our brothers. No. We're not here trying to show them up. No. We are here that God may be represented and get down to truth. Yeah. What is your name, brother? Dao. Brother Dao, pleasure to meet you again, brother. You can come close to the microphone and Say exactly what you desire to say. Okay, uh, I'd like to say, um, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello to the ones who are not Muslim and not familiar with those terms. I am a friend of Brother Tom Smallwood. I'm just here for support. Uh, I'm not really uh, authorized to speak on the subject about anything has anything to do with the nation of Islam. Although I do read the teaching and all the Ambu Elijah Muhammad's books, peace be upon him. What I know about God being man is that in Habakkuk that I have read, 3-3, it speaks about where and if anyone have any doubt in mind of guessing what Thank God you. can be or where he is or where he could be. Um, you want the brother to read it for you? Sure. You can. All right. Three, three. Habakkuk chapter 3. In Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. God came from Timon mm -hmm. and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Selah. All right. Okay. Now right there is saying that where God came from. Now, if I wanted to know where God came from, then I had no business speaking about or trying to guess where he came from if the book is saying exactly where he came from. I'm just trying to use a little bit of common sense here, that's all. So help me understand. Um, so even though this says God came from Teman, you're saying it is that scripture that means God had a beginning. Is that what you're saying? Well, Brother Gino. Because, uh, my brother, if you're saying that scripture means God had a beginning, then if God came from darkness, was teeming in darkness? Mm. If that's what that means. Well, well you know, it, all, it all depends how you look at that. Well, you know, and I know, Teman was not born till later. The earth was already here. Creation was already here. Yeah. What that scripture is saying, to me, my understanding is that yes. God is just simply man. A man. A man. A human being. A son of another man. And if God can be anything else and everything else, if he's God, can he be man too? So <clears throat> you're saying Allah is a man? That's what I'm saying. He came from Teman. Teman uh, is uh, a son of another man. To be a son, you must be begotten. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct? Correct. All right, let's examine back at the Quran. The surah, 
chapter 1, Surah 1, verse 1 again. Say, He is Allah, the one and only Allah, the eternal, absolute. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten. Amen. If the Quran is the basis of the nation of Islam, then they must change their teaching right. to be in agreement with the Prophet Muhammad, or you must say Allah lied. Okay, well, because Allah said He's not begotten. Begotten of what? What do you mean? He's not conceived. Was Allah ever born? And if he was born, who's his mother? Mm. I know you're not a Catholic because you know ain't no woman in heaven. <laughs> can, a, can a man be everlasting? Can a man, a human being, be eternal? And can a man be absolute, absolute being perfect? You know and I know there's imperfection in us, but not in God. Yeah. Well, God. talk to God, me. God to me is the truth. Which God are you speaking of? I'm speaking about the one God who is truth, truth to me. Truth is God. To yes, sir. Me. All right. Truth is something that resides inside of human beings. All right. The spoken truth, the word of truth, the yeah. mouth is truth. Mm -hmm. um, God is <clears throat> it's just simply to me, who, if I'm not uh, mistaken, in the scripture about uh, he manifests himself in the flesh. All right. Now, there's a lot of things in the scripture that's questionable. Okay. There's some things in there the, in the book that uh, needs to be explained to. Let me, let, me, let me help you out a little bit. Scripture you quoted, God was manifested in the flesh. Does that mean God was flesh? No, um, it means that God manifests the truth, but in the flesh. Are you saying, and, go ahead brother. Go ahead. Are you saying that means God became flesh or God was flesh? <laughs> Well, I'm saying that the truth <clears throat> that was in man, yes. which was the flesh that was used to become, to perfect God. It represented the will of God. Represent the will. And it wasn't God, the flesh. Well, at that time, I guess you will say it was God because God manifests itself in that flesh. Okay. If you read in uh, Matthew 24, 27, it speaks about yeah. a a man coming. I mean, the scriptures is it's always talking about man, man, man. Exactly. Man, 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 man. We keep looking for something else besides man. Well, let me say this. Is God in you? God is in me. Allah is in you. Yes, sir. To, when a thing is manifest, is it not seen? Yes, sir. You're in your suit. Yes, sir. You're manifest in your suit. Are you the suit? No, sir. Exactly. So what that means? Because God manifests himself in flesh. Muhammad, a student of Master Farad Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Now, we got two statements made by two messengers. Mm -hmm. And is it is an absolute contradiction of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to Prophet Muhammad in Surah 6, if you don't mind me reading, verse 1, Praise be to Allah who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness. Mm. Yeah. Praise be to God who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the light, yet those who reject faith hold others as equal with their guardian Lord. Allah says here, he made darkness. Yeah. Elijah Muhammad said God created himself 
from darkness. So according to the Quran, God was here first and then darkness came after. According to Minister Farrakhan, darkness was here first and God came after. Who should we believe? Amen. Now your loyalty have to be greater towards Allah than anyone else. Is that right? Amen. Amen. loyalty is to God himself. Amen. If our acknowledgement of truth will take our life, truth is worth dying for. Amen. So tell us, brother, do you believe the Quran or do you believe the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad on this subject? I believe the teacher of the Uncle Elijah Muhammad, Muhammad 100 percent. That's right. I also uh, tell you the truth. I'm not really interested in how God created himself, that first God. We don't have that knowledge. Uh, what I am interested in is I would like to talk about God coming to find a people or a sheep that was lost. Well, let me say this. You don't need for us to look for no people yet. No. Not yet. Oh my God, we got to get God right first. <laughs> what good is talking about a people if we don't know the creator of this people? Amen. When God sent the prophets, they had a complete divine message for the upbuilding of a people. Right. We are talking about the greatest of the greatest. That's right. Yes, sir. You want to come up, brother? Yes. Yes, sir. Make yourself welcome. Yes, sir. My mind's off. Assalamu alaikum. I want to give your name, brother. Uh, brother Najee Muhammad. Brother Najee Muhammad, make yourself welcome. Uh, peace be upon everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Let me give you a hand here, brother. Put it on this side for the brother. I want everyone to be able to hear what my brother's saying. All right, brother. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful, I bear witness that there's no God to be worshipped but Allah, who created the heavens and the earth. I thank him for all the prophets and the messengers that he had brought to us. And I thank brother Pastor Gino for allowing us to come and to talk on something that had not been known for since life even begun. And that is the mystery of God. And that is who is God? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, these questions was addressed to him. And he did not address certain questions that when it came down to God creating himself. When you look for a minute and think hard, before everything that was here, before man was here, before the earth was here, before even the universe was here, even before darkness was here, God, Allah, was here. Now, I want you to think for a minute, real hard. When God as it was taught to us by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of God. And many of the Muslims, the world Muslims, may not accept the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a messenger, but the Quran teaches us also that he have given us messengers that is not even mentioned in the Holy Quran. But yet, this man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, says that he is a messenger of Allah, and he had a message to give 
to a people. Mm -hmm. And the message that he had to give to his people was actually in the Bible, the lost sheep. A particular people to give them a knowledge of themselves, of who they are. He said, well, who is the black man? He said the black man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. Now, I was sitting here listening to everyone singing a song. And you said Jesus is God. Did you say that? Yes. All right. If you say Jesus is God, is he a man? Yes, yes or no? Both. <laughs> so he's God and he's man. Yes. But it was said that God is the spirit. And to worship him in what? Spirit and what? Truth. Is that right? But yet the song say Jesus didn't say Jesus is spirit. Says what? Jesus is God. Now many of the Muslims say, well, hold it now. Hold, hold, hold it. Hold it now. Pastor Gino, you say that Jesus is God. All right. Jesus never talked about himself. Who did he talk about? The Father. What will did he talk about? Did he talk about his will or thy will? He talked about who will? God's will. What is your name again, brother? Brother Naji Muhammad. Brother Naji Muhammad. Uh, that's all well and good. I yeah. want to, I, I, I'm making points. I okay. want to get right down to yes, right what down we're saying. Talk because like I, I said, know. we're not talking about flesh and blood. We're talking yeah. about a teaching that thousands of nation of Islamic brothers and sisters believe that God created himself from darkness and all I want to know out of everything is said the bottom line is this either that teaching is a lie that deceived people into believing something about God that's not true or either that teaching is true according to the Bible or the Quran okay all right let's get back to the mystery of God let's get right back to the mystery of God the and Bible said great is the who mystery is of God darkness. As I started, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, sir. Nothing in existence. Well, hold it. What's so hold, hold it. it now. I don't mean Let to me, cut you off. Go ahead. But if you said there was nothing, mm -hmm. and Elijah Muhammad said there was something, mm -hmm. <laughs> what you mean something? Darkness is not. Is that not an element? Oh yes, I'm getting ready to dab right into that. All right, dab now. I'm going to dab into it. <laughs> I want you to dab now. Brothers and sisters, as I stated to you that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad never got into issues that are discussions of that. Yeah. But let's get back into our thinking, put our thinking caps on. Mm -hmm. There was darkness, which triple darkness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said God came into. And Pastor Gino, I came here a year ago and you said God can do anything. That's you right. said that. Oh, yes. That's right. So when God, when there was nothing, and even there was no darkness, but God was here. Mm -hmm. Now, in darkness, to deal with the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you have to deal with science. You got to deal with science. Well, because in darkness, there is what? Matter. Mm -hmm. See the lights that's on in here? It's called electricity. No one don't really understand the power of electricity. Electricity works within the conveyor of copper wire, luminal wire, but the best is gold. The same thing that God does, he, he do the same within us, the spirit, of, the spirit of God. But before there was nothing, there was no darkness. But yet, there's nothing. So now God wants to bring something into existence. Instead of just nothing, that, nothing in existence, he wants to bring something into existence. So he brings himself hmm. now. into existence in darkness. He had to create darkness first to come in to, to because in darkness there's matter. 
So he comes in within that and matter into existence. So God is made from matter. Is he made from matter? That's what you said. No, no, now no. Hold it, no, minute. hold it. He Go comes. Ahead. No, listen, listen, ahead, listen, Go listen ahead. carefully. Go ahead. Matter is materialized. Something that you can. It comes. It, it's real. So order from to come into existence, he had to come. He had to create darkness because in darkness there's matter. Do y'all hear the contradiction? Yes. Sir. yes sir. Now, brother. Peace be upon all the worthy servants of God. Yes. When a thing come into being, it wasn't here before. Right. If a thing come into being, it was not here. That's, that's just true. Right. We came into being, we were not here. Right. So when you say God created himself, when a thing is created, it's made, correct? Right. Now, when self created. A, when a thing self created. Self created. Right. If God self made himself. Hmm. Hmm. If God self into created it. himself, how is he everlasting? Because we're not talking about the physical elements does has a beginning. Yes, but... But he had to come into a physical form because in your own scripture says that I created man in what? In my image. So the form that he came in when he created himself from darkness. From out of triple darkness. Was what? It was matter within triple darkness. Hmm. Now, do you believe the Quran? Yes. Are you a devout Muslim? Yes. Do you believe the teachings of the prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad? Yes. Is that the teachings of Muhammad? Yes. Read it. What sir? What verse? You tell me. You said it is the teachings of Muhammad that God, Allah, created himself from darkness. If that's the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, then you should be able to go to the Quran where Muhammad taught this to the Islamic world. Amen. Okay. There was no man can be a devout Muslim and speak contrary to Allah, the Quran, and Muhammad. Amen. No Muslim in the world can be a devout Muslim and speak against Allah. Allah said he is eternal. You said he came from darkness. Who's telling the truth, Allah or you? Talk to me. Let me say this. Shit. Every prophet, a messenger that came, they had a message. They may have had a different message, but the principle, yes, remains the same. What is that principle, sir? The principle that there is no God but Allah. Yes. And that he is eternal. Yes. He is everlasting. Mm -hmm. And that we are to do his will. That was the message that every prophet and messenger came to us and to the world. Well, I'm dealing with a different message. Yeah. And the message that I'm having problem with, problem with is that Allah created himself. In other words, Allah is self-made. He's a self-made God. Mm -hmm. This is the teachings of the nation of Islam that almighty God, the sender of all prophets, he is a self-made God. No prophet in the Quran or in the Bible Right. have ever taught such a teaching right. if there is a new revelation about God it must be verified by the scriptures we have all the scriptures now that's right, that's right. That's right. we have all the scriptures now right. we have the Quran the scriptures of Islam we have the Bible we have all the scriptures here and we should be able to get one prophet that's right. amen 
at least one, uh, Mohammed or Isaiah or David or Jeremiah or Elisha or Daniel or Abraham, the Bible says, bring forth your witnesses that you might be justified. Yeah. Yeah. Your justification must be in here. You're giving me what some man told you who was not able to justify his teaching in the Quran. Right. So, why should I or the Muslim world believe something that this book itself do not represent God in that manner? Amen. You got to help me out, man. Talk to me. I'm going to talk to all of you. Yeah. <laughs> as a Muslim and as a believer of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, this is the knowledge had never been told before. And I'm not here to make you a believer of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm sure that many of you had never heard that before. And that you have maybe perhaps is taking face value of what is being said. But as a believer of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I have to believe it as a believer. Hold it just a minute, brother. Yes, sir. Because your loyalty, your loyalty, you are committed to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. True? My loyalty is to Allah. Okay. Is your loyalty or to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Yes. Now, if we teach something about Allah that contradicts Allah, are you loyal still to that teaching? Yes. Mm. Because it's not contradicted. That is not a Muslim. It is not contradicted. Not at all. Not this at all. This holy Quran hmm. supposed to be the foundation of the religion of Islam. Amen. If Allah cannot be respected by Elijah Muhammad or Minister Farrakhan or anyone else as the absolute, the eternal, self-existing, self-guided, always was, having no beginning and no ending. If he's not represented in that manner, you're not a Muslim. Amen. what you just said I ask you that if Elijah Muhammad teach you something about Allah mm -hmm. that contradicts Allah mm. would you believe it you say yes you are putting the Elijah Muhammad above God amen See, no. That is incorrect. How? That is incorrect. How, brother? For one thing, who make Muslims? Well, God's supposed to make Muslims. Right. So, for you to say that I'm not a Muslim, that is incorrect. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he came to us, he said that I'm the messenger of Allah. He never said that I was the messenger of Master for Muhammad. He said I'm the messenger of Allah. And I am here to give a message to my people. Does his message supposed to be in agreement with what already Allah said in the Quran? Yes. Do not the message that God created himself contradicts what Allah said in the Quran about himself? <laughs> brother you can't Pastor deny Gina. the fact, brother, that it Pastor. contradicts Allah. And you should not be afraid to say it. Amen. If you expect to be in paradise with the other Muslims, peace be upon them all, you must recognize Allah first. Yes. That's right. Yes. You must agree with Allah first. We must submit to the teachings of Allah first. And if a messenger of Allah deviates from the message of Allah, then the deviation of that message is wrong. Amen. Amen. Pastor,
The teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad may not be understood to many people. And there may be some contradiction as far as when you hear the teachings. But in reality, it is not. It is real, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was, and he is the messenger. That does not take away anything away from Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. That doesn't take anything away from him, because we believe in Prophet Muhammad, because if it was not him, there would not be a foundation at all. Oh, so if it was, I'm so glad you said that. Yes. <laughs> if it wasn't Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then it would not be no foundation. Right. So, are the Muslims required to follow the foundation laid by the Prophet Muhammad? Yes. If they are required by the Quran to follow the message, then every Muslim that come with the message from the Quran must agree with Allah. True? Yes. Amen. Did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad agree with the Prophet Muhammad? Yes. The Prophet Muhammad says God is eternal and that Allah made darkness. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said God created himself from darkness. Triple darkness. Triple darkness or quadruple <laughs> or mass darkness. Whatever way you desire to put it, my sole interest is what the scripture says. Right. We cannot teach Muslims from the scriptures and then disbelieve the scriptures. Amen. Is that right? Amen. That's right. My Muslim viewers <clears throat> that hear us around the world and that walk us through America, you, we cannot, you cannot disbelieve the Quran and then read from the Quran you disbelieve. Amen. We cannot say that Muhammad laid the foundation, then a teaching come along that contradict the foundation that was laid. The scriptures teaches us this. The Bible says, other foundation no man can no man lay no man. than that which is laid. So again, we got a stiff contradiction. As I stated to you, Pastor Gino, that Prophet Muhammad, he has set a foundation. And when you see the uh, Kaaba, which is in Mecca, yes. you know, as a believer, as a Muslim, we are to visit at least once in a lifetime. Yes, sir. To walk around the Kaaba seven times, which that's a significant sign. It means something. Yes, sir. And to also is to kiss the black stone. Mm -hmm. So what is the purpose of kissing, kissing the black stone? Uh, and what is the purpose of walking around the Kaaba seven times? Uh, sir, I don't, yes. I don't know the purpose of kissing the stone. I don't know the purpose. I don't mind acknowledging. I don't know the purpose of walking around it seven times. But I do know the purpose, how that stone got here. God created everything. And... Um, we're not dealing with walking around the stone. No. We're not dealing with kissing it. We're dealing with the maker and sender of all prophets. Amen. You see, it is unnecessary for us to talk about all this other stuff until we get God right. right. That's right. First thing first. Listen, we, 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 we can't talk about God like he's somebody from the hood. Amen. The representation of God is going to judge us. Amen. And if we misrepresent God, we'll be a damn people. Amen. God is perfect. God is absolute. God is infallible. Amen. Amen. The teaching that God created himself, that God was made, I firmly believe it's a lie. Amen. Amen. And I got scripture in the Bible and the Quran that would justify me saying so. That's right. Pastor Peter, yes, you say that Jesus is God, is that right? We're not talking about Jesus being God. No. We ain't talking about that. No. We ain't talking about man. We ain't talking about flesh. We ain't talking about Mary. We ain't talking about Joseph. We're not talking about Abraham. We ain't talking about Ishmael or Isaiah or Isaac. We're talking about God. Amen. And the mystery of God. 
We're talking about God and how God came into being if he came into being. A divine being. He, came, he became a divine being? He came as a divine being. Was God always was? He always was and is and shall always be. So he wasn't created? Self-created. Hmm. <laughs> Will you please show us in the scriptures where such a teaching is there? Because brother, you know and I know, and the viewing audience know, and everybody here knows that this brother loyalty to Elijah Muhammad have exceeded his loyalty to God, and he would not say that Elijah Muhammad did not teach the truth. Amen. In my closing, brothers and sisters, you know, when prophets and messengers came, they ridiculed him, they mocked him, they laughed at him. But when reality came, they realized that the message that was brought to the people, it was true. So you can laugh, you can ridicule me, or the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it's fine. That's inspected. No, don't misunderstand me. We're not laughing at you. We don't want you to misrepresent me. Right. Right. I'm not laughing at you. I'm not ridiculing you. We're dealing with truth. The reality of Allah. The truth is plain and simple. If I teach something about God that's not true and it contradicts the scriptures, you are justified saying I'm a lie. That's right. Amen. Amen. See, all messengers of God have a power or an authority that's greater than thee, than they. That's right. And they must respect God and represent God correctly. <laughs> All I'm saying that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, <clears throat> if he is and was the messenger of Almighty Allah, then why would he tell you something about Allah that the religion of Islam have nothing to do with? Amen. Make me understand why the messenger of Allah will teach you something about Allah that has nothing to do with Allah. I believe it's in Surah 7 that Allah tells the uh, angels to bow down to a blip. To, I mean, a blip to bow down to the angel. Yes. And the angel or a blip would not bow to him. But Allah is saying to bow to, telling a blip to bow to the angel. But the angel said, uh, the a blip said, no, I'm not going to bow. And Allah said, why would you not bow? Because he said, I'm made out of fire. And I'm better than you. So but what is my point? We say that Allah is God, yes. But yet, in the Quran, Allah says, and demand it's blip to bow to an angel. And yet, in the Muslim world, we used to worship no one but Allah. What is your point, brother? My point is that when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came to us, he wanted to show the world that who we are, that we are gods. And in your Bible, it says that we are the children of the most high God. Mm -hmm. The most high God. We are God. We are not Allah, but we are gods. Mm -hmm. And our will is connected with Allah. And that we are capable of doing powerful, great things. But in God's will. I agree with that 100%, brother. I agree with that 100%. Uh, I have no quarrels with that at all. Uh, my uh, discussion is not with the children of Allah or that we are gods, but talk about the God of heaven and earth. Right. And I'm telling you, either we as the people of God Almighty tell the truth about him Amen. Or lie about him. Amen. 
Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is written in the Surah 6. Allah says he's eternal, absolute. The Bible says mm -hmm. from everlasting to everlasting to, to everlasting thou art God. When you say everlasting, that's no beginning. Everlasting. Is there an ending or a beginning to everlasting? Okay. Is it? Let me make a point. Before you make your point, can you answer that question? Yes, there is. A beginning to everlasting? There is an everlasting. There is. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said <clears throat> that everything, it does have a beginning somewhere, but it was not, it was no one to record the beginning. Now, let's say that you are here, you're 35 years of age, and brother, he made a good point when he mentioned it the other day, mm -hmm. brother Amir, eternal. Now, if you're 35 years, let's say you're 35 years of age. All right. He said, well, where did you come from? Well, I come from my mother. Okay, but how old are you? I'm 35 of age. What was you yesterday? Well, yesterday I was 35.